So here we see in the lead up to Rasmus Hoyland's opening goal of this game, after Manchester United play a lofted pass into the West Ham defensive third, Kurt Zoom is going to win the initial header, and the ball is going to drop into this highlighted area in front of the West Ham midfield line. And it's Casemiro who really creates his goal, you can see he's actually starting behind James Ward-Prowse, as Zuma connects with the ball, but he anticipates it quicker than the West Ham midfielders. And this is Casemiro at his best, front foot aggressive defending, not just reading the game quicker than the West Ham midfielders, but also having that confidence and aggression to jump out of that deeper holding midfield role and look to actually get in front of James Ward-Prowse to make the front foot interception. And so you can see here as Casemiro gets in front of James Ward-Prowse to actually win the ball, you've got Hoyland in the central position, but also Rashford and Garnacho in central positions. And whilst neither Garnacho or Rashford actually touch the ball in the lead up to Hoyland's goal, their narrow positioning actually plays a huge role in allowing Hoyland to get into a shooting position in the first place. And I will come on to this in just a sec, but if watching Garnacho and Hoyland reminded you of the days of Rooney and Ronaldo, then go over to Jersey FIFA, you can check out all their Manchester United retro jerseys from the 2000s and the early 1990s. They also got other clubs and international sides as well. If you use code Atlantis at checkout, you'll get a discount. A link will be in my Instagram bio, which will be linked in the description below. So as we see, Casemiro makes the interception on the edge of the final third. And this is where we see the influence of Rashford and Garnacho's narrow positioning. As if Rashford, but in particular Garnacho, had been sitting in wider positions in the build up to this, one of Agued or Zuma could probably push out onto Hoyland because they don't have to worry about one of Rashford or Garnacho making that darting run into a central position. However, because of their narrow positioning, neither Zuma or Agued stick tight to Hoyland, and so this allows him to turn with the ball as soon as he receives it. And from here, because you've got Rashford making the run on the outside of Zuma, he doesn't want to come out and close down Hoyland because he's going to vacate that space. And the same goes for Agued on the left side of West Ham's defence. You can see Garnacho is closer to him than he is to Emerson. And so the Moroccan centre-back is reluctant to move out initially to close down Hoyland, choosing instead to hold that central position and stopping that run from Garnacho straight through the middle. And this split second where Agued holds a deeper position allows Hoyland to shape as though he's going to shoot on his left foot. And so when Agued actually does step out of the back line to close down Hoyland, Hoyland sells him the dummy, dragging the ball back across his body onto his right foot. And the fact that on his right foot, he can rifle one like this into the bottom corner shows that Hoyland is evolving his game and he's got a variety of different finishes in his locker. And so this, of course, makes his game even more unpredictable. If he was solely going on his left foot and like Anthony had a pretty non-existent right foot, then this goal just doesn't come about because even if he gets into the shooting position, he wouldn't have the ability to do what he did with his right foot, putting the ball in the bottom corner and making it 1-0 to United. And so whilst Casemiro has to take all the plaudits for actually creating this goal, I think Ten Hag's use of both Garnacho and Rashford in these high and narrow positions has to be seen as at least an indirect contribution to this goal. But if you are signed up to my Patreon and you did listen to my match report off the cuff, which comes out straight after every game, you can sign up for a 7 day free trial, it will be linked in the description. I will be releasing other podcast episodes as well on there, there's some unreleased tactics videos as well. So check that out, you would be helping to support the channel, it would be very much appreciated. But in that match report podcast, I spoke about Hoyland starting now to develop his overall game as a centre forward. And we saw this in this game against West Ham, but also against Wolves as well. Now certainly in the first half of the season, I don't think it was ever in doubt Hoyland's goal scoring ability, particularly in the box, because he did seem like a natural poacher. What was always in question was what he does outside of the box and even outside of the final third as well. But since the start of 2024, I think Hoyland's already improved this part of his game. United need a centre forward who can drop off between the lines and receive the ball in behind the opposition's midfield line. Because without this type of centre forward, they're far too reliant on Bruno Fernandes to be that player to link the play between the lines. And this results in United forcing a lot of counter-attacks because that's when Bruno Fernandes has the space in behind the opposition's midfield line. When the opposition can get back into a compact defensive unit in the middle and defensive third, they are then able to compress the space between their midfield and defensive lines and stop Bruno Fernandes finding this sort of space. It's why United have struggled to break down deep compact defensive units throughout the first half of this season. But now, instead of being wholly reliant on Bruno Fernandes receiving the ball in behind the opposition's midfield, when him and Mainu drop in front of the opposition's midfield line, leading to them squeezing up the pitch, the space is now there for Rasmus Hoyland to be the one to drop off from the centre-backs, and this causes them a dilemma. 
If one of the centre backs decides to follow Hoyland into this deep position, when he receives the ball with his back to goal, he's now got the ability to hold off the centre back, using his physicality to protect the ball, and then laying it off to one of the deeper midfielders, or even into Bruno Fernandes, who can then move between the lines. And because one of the centre backs has followed Hoyland out of the defensive line, this then creates space in the opposition's back line for one of the deeper midfielders, or maybe even someone like Garnacho or Rashford, to make penetrating runs into. And if Hoyland can lay the ball off to Bruno Fernandes or Casemiro, a through ball could release Garnacho into a 1v1 position. Alternatively, if the centre backs do what West Ham's centre backs did a lot in this game, where they instead decide to hold their positions in the back line, not vacating that space for United's runners, this then gives Hoyland time to receive the ball turn and drive the play forward and he has been incredibly effective at linking the play but also driving the ball into the final third and I thought specifically in the game against Wolves he did this incredibly well. Here we see around the 10th minute against Wolves that United are using that 3-2 build up shape with Dalot and Mainu playing as a double pivot, Casemiro's dropped into the back line to create the wide back three, giving Ten Hag's side that wide base to then allow them to circulate the ball around Wolves' front line. But I don't just want to talk about Hoyland here, also keep an eye on Dalot and Totti who's pushed up onto him, and look how Dalot's tactical awareness and his movement actually creates a space for Hoyland to then receive the ball. So we see here as a ball gets shifted across to Varane on the right side, that Dalot almost instantly and with urgency drops into a very deep position position, but it's not to receive the ball. What Dalot's doing here is he's dragging Totti out of that central area, which then opens up the space for Hoyland to drop into. Varane sees and then plays that midfield splitting pass straight into Hoyland's feet, but what really impressed me about this move is watch how Hoyland takes the ball. Now I think at the start of the season, if Hoyland's receiving this pass, he probably receives the ball with his back to goal, taking a touch, which would then send him temporarily back towards his own goal and allow Doherty, the left wing back, to actually get goal side, keeping Hoyland and the ball in front of the Wolves midfield line. But Hoyland of 2024 instead opens up his body, receiving the ball side on, which then allows him to receive the ball with his back foot, and so his first touch takes him in front of Doherty. And even though Doherty does eventually recover and get goal side, he has to drop back to cover Garnacho's run, but because Hoyland initially opened up his body, he's now actually on the edge of the Wolves' defensive third and can drive forward with it, before then laying the ball off to Mainu, Mainu plays a pass into Bruno Fernandes, and now United have gone from having the ball in front of the whole Wolves' defensive shape, to being able to progress the ball into Hoyland in the middle third via Dalo's movement, dragging Totti out of that space, and now from Hoyland to Mainu into Bruno Fernandes, United now have the ball in the final third in a matter of just a few passes. And we saw a similar sort of thing happen against West Ham. Here Maguire has the ball on the edge of the middle third, and you can see Kudus is cutting the passing lane into Dalot in the centre, whilst James Ward-Prowse is sitting close to Varane, and so all of Maguire's short passing options centrally are being cut off by West Ham's positioning. However, despite the initial pass into Dalo being cut off, Maguire is still going to work the ball into his feet, but he's going to do it through Hoyland. And so he drives forward with the ball into the middle third, and then plays a midfield splitting pass into Hoyland, who probably could turn with the ball in this situation, as neither of the West Ham centre-backs have followed him into this deeper position, but instead he lays the ball off first time into Dalo, and now both James Ward-Prowse and Kudus have been taken out the game, and Dalo's driving forward, bearing down on West Ham's defensive third as he switches play out to Luke Shaw on the left side. And this all came from Maguire using Hoyland as a wall pass to get the ball into Dalo, meaning that even when West Ham would cut off the passing lanes into the central players Dalo, Mainu and Casemiro, United can use that direct pass into Hoyland in order to then get the ball into their feet indirectly. And Hoyland did this specifically well against Wolves, whether it was dropping off from the forward line, holding off one of the Wolves centre backs when they were pushed up against him, pressurising him, where he could then lay off the ball efficiently, linking the play and allowing United to transition the attack from the defensive to the middle and then into the final third. But we also saw him doing it when he was driving the attack forward, when he would drop off and one of the Wolves centre backs or central midfielders wouldn't be on his back and he could turn and drive with the ball. And what really impressed me throughout the Wolves game was not just his pass selection, but his timing and weight of pass as well, which I thought was phenomenal. And this was exactly why Ten Hag brought in Valt Weghorst last season, 
because despite the Dutchman being, let's be real, pretty much below average in most parts of his game, what he was very good at was dropping off and linking the play efficiently with his back to goal. And Hoyland is now developing this ability, and this is fundamental to Ten Hag's attack as it allows the play to be linked quickly, wherefrom United can then move the ball into the likes of Fernandes and Rashford in behind the opposition's midfield, pushing the attack into the final third, which ultimately is going to help them create more chances because they're moving the ball through the middle third a lot quicker rather than just moving the ball from side to side and allowing the opposition to get back in a compact defensive unit. But in the game against West Ham, we also saw United using Hoyland to link the attack in a far more direct way as well. Here we see that Onana has possession and he's being pressurised, and now he probably could play this pass into Casemiro, because West Ham's double pivot of Alvarez and Suchek aren't actually tight to Casemiro in this instance. And so if Onana had played the pass into Casemiro, he could probably just turn out and carry the ball out of the defensive third, but instead what we see Onana do is go long using his left foot, and rather than it just being an aimless long ball upfield, he's actually targeting Hoyland. And Hoyland does fantastically in the aerial duel, not just heading the ball down under pressure from Zuma, but actually controlling it on his chest. And as you can see here, because United have gone with a more direct pass upfield, Suchek and Alvarez are still high up the pitch, which means both Bruno Fernandes and Marcus Rashford have space in behind the West Ham midfield. Hoyland controls the ball, holds off Zuma, and manages to link play very efficiently with a backhill pass into Bruno Fernandes who can now carry the ball into the final third. But Hoyland doesn't stop there and he continues to show his athleticism. He turns quickly and manages to get away from Zuma who's now caught up field and when the ball goes into Garnacho on the left side, Hoyland's bursting a gut to provide that overlapping run and he gets into a decent shooting position and he'll probably feel like he should have either gone across goal or gone high towards the near post but instead he can't really set himself for the shot and it ends up going into the side netting but it still was a fantastic shooting position for United to get in going all the way from the defensive third into Hoyland in the middle third and then progressing the ball in the final third using a more direct means and simply a pass along the floor. And whilst this more direct play probably isn't the best option against sides like West Ham who are going to sit off quite passively, against sides who are going to squeeze up the pitch and look to press United aggressively in their defensive third, rather than always looking to build out under this pressure, United can instead take advantage of the space between the opposition's defensive and midfield lines by keeping the front three of Garnacho, Rashford and Hoyland in higher positions, pinning the opposition's back line backwards on the halfway line, which will give Bruno Fernandes maximum space between the lines because the opposition's midfield will push up in order to press United in the defensive third. And this is where having a ball playing keeper like Andre Onana can really be utilised as he's essentially a free man even if the opposition look to man to man press United. And so he can get the ball out of his feet, play a long ball into Hoyland and as we saw from these examples, Hoyland's got the ability to win those aerial duels whether he's heading the ball down into Bruno Fernandes or controlling it on his chest and laying it off. Which in turn is going to allow Bruno Fernandes to receive the ball in that optimal position in behind the opposition's midfield in the middle third, where he can then do what he does best by threading those through balls for the diagonal runs of Garnacho and Rashford in behind, getting them into 1v1 goal scoring positions. And so you can see here how Hoyland developing his link up play and his back to goal game is really going to improve United's overall attack. As when United had Lukaku or even Marcus Rashford in that centre forward position, they didn't have a striker who could link play efficiently, and that's why the ball would almost bounce back and United would concede possession when they tried to play these balls into the striker's feet. But with Hoyland, and you've got a variety of different ways you can link play, whether it's a pass into his feet, he can link play with his back to go under pressure, or he can turn and drive forward, but United could also use long balls from the defensive third into Hoyland to win those aerial duels, and so this just gives United a diverse way of moving the ball from the defensive to the middle, and subsequently into the final third within a matter of passes and that speed, which ultimately is going to allow United to create more goal scoring opportunities. So thank you for watching, if you enjoyed that video check out my analysis of Dalor as well as Maynu's performance against Wolves, both of those videos will be linked in the description below, check out my Patreon as well and subscribe to the channel and click the bell so you do get notified when my videos come out.